In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Sunbeams node in Blender's compositor. So I just recently created this camping scene and I have this moon here and I wanted to add these sunbeams. Well, not really sunbeams, but give the effect of sunbeams so that there are these bright parts shining down from the moon. Now this can also be done on a sun, of course, and it can also be done on other bright objects. Uh, you can see this result right here. This is a tutorial that I created. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to do that. In that tutorial, we use this node as well. Real quick before we get started, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D model site where you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. What I love about Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your 3D models in your browser and even view them on a phone or tablet. Sketchfab also has a 3D model store where you can purchase assets for your 3D work. Check out Sketchfab with the links in the description. All right, so here we are in Blender's compositor and I've just rendered out this camping scene. So to get started, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for the Sunbeams node. I'm going to hold down the Shift and Control key and then click on the node. I have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on so I can just Control Shift and click on the node to preview it. Now, right now you can't really see anything and that's because the ray length is set to zero. So if I turn that all the way to one, you can now see that something is happening. Uh, what I'm gonna do is control shift and click back on the glare, and then I will just select the sunbeams. And when I do that, when I select the sunbeams node, you can see that this little crosshair appears and you can actually move this to where you want the center of the sunbeams to be. So you can change these values right here, like the 0.5 uh, X and Y values, but it's really easy just to grab it and then move it over. So I want it to be right over here. If you have like a sun or maybe some other bright object, uh, it works best on bright objects. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Something else that also really helps is having a little bit of a texture on your bright object. So the moon right here, you can see it has a little bit of a texture, whereas if it were just perfectly white, it would be more like a glow. But because it has these little dark parts and light parts, that'll help to show the different sun rays. So if you can give your bright object some sort of texture, that would really help but it'll work either way. So now what I need to do is I need to tell it what image we're using. So the render layers, I'm gonna put that into the image right here. And now if I control shift and click on this, it's not gonna be white. It is going to show that the image and you can see what it's doing. So it's taking the little bit of texture there and it's able to use that. You can see if I just zoom in here, it's using the little bits on the moon to make those lighter and darker parts. And that's why it's a little bit helpful if you can have some sort of texture. So now all we need to do is we need to add this back into the final image. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to add a mix. Now I don't want this to be a mix. I wanna actually turn it to an add. So if I can find it right here, add, change that to add. And then I wanna stick it right in here. And it's kind of laggy because Blender is trying to composite this. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sunbeams and I'm going to put this into the bottom of the ad. And then we're mixing that with the glare, which is coming from the render layers. So we're mixing them two together. And then if I just wait for this to load up, you'll be able to see what it looks like. There we go. Very cool. Now we set this to add. So what it's doing is it's just taking this and it's adding it to the image. Now this is really strong. So the factor, I'm going to turn that down. So basically we're telling it that we're going going to add less of this on here when we turn the factor down. All right, wait for that to load up and there we go. So this is basically it. That is how I use sunbeams, but there is something that you might've noticed here. And that is that other bright objects in the scene start to have some sunbeams as well. If I control shift and click on this, you can kind of see uh, the fire there. It has some sunbeams and that isn't very nice. I really don't like that. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Now, one way you could fix this is just by turning the ray length down, but this only sort of fixes the problem. It basically just makes everything a little less strong. You could use it if you want to and it might help to fix your scene, but I find that it doesn't help very much. You can see it just kind of made these sunbeams less strong, but it didn't really get rid of them too much down here. I'm gonna turn that back to one. So what we need to do is we just need to mask out the part that we don't want there to be the sunbeams and then we can put it in here. So I'm gonna press shift A and you could use an ellipse mask. I'm gonna use a box mask. Those work pretty well, so I'm just gonna add this box mask right here. And then if you click on the box mask, you can see that there's this little white box. So what you can do is you can change this and you can also, let me just make this a little bit bigger. You can change where this is. So I'm just going to move it down there right on the fire and then just scale it up. 
make it bigger. The box mask is just gonna be around this entire area. So now what I need to do, if I control shift and click on this, it's just gonna be a box, a white box with a black background. And so I need to blur this and then use it as the factor to tell it where the sunbeams is gonna be. So I'll press shift A and I'm gonna search for a blur node. I'm just gonna drop the blur node right in here. And then I'm going to click drag down and then I can just start to drag back and forth and I can start to just blur this. So I do want it to be pretty blurred and that way you won't be able to see the transition. So I'm gonna turn it way up here to like 500 or something like that. Now when you blur, it also gets quite big. So if you need to, you can go back here and just make it smaller. I think I might do that. I think I might just kind of bring this down a little bit cause it is pretty blurred. So I'll just bring it down a little bit and over to the side. There we go. So now what I need to do is I just need to use this as a factor to tell it where the sunbeams is gonna be. So I want the sunbeams to be in the black area, but then I don't want them to be in the white area cause that is where the fire is. So I'm gonna click on this add and press shift D to duplicate it. I'm just gonna drop it right here. Now I don't want this to be set to add. I want this to be set to mix. And then this blur here, I want this to be the factor. So I'm gonna plug it right there. And then this sunbeams, I want to put this one into the top one right here. And then I'll control shift and click on this so we can preview it. Now this one down here, I want this one to be transparent because we want to add it right here. This image right here, the bottom one, I'm gonna turn it all the way to black. And then right down here on this A here, that is alpha. I'm gonna turn that to zero so that there is an alpha channel. And you can see now that where that mask is, it's becoming transparent. Now you can still see the fire slightly. So there's a few things you could do to fix this. You could turn this down here, this blur, and that would make it less blurred. You could also just pull this up and you can see that is helping to get rid of it. So I think I'll just bring it slightly more up so that it's just a little bit harder to see. We'll just wait for that to load up. There we go. So you can barely see the fire now. So now what we can do is instead of using this sunbeams, we're just going to use this one instead. So I'm just gonna box select these, pull them over, and then this one, it's going to in the bottom one. I'm just gonna replace it for this mix and then put that in there. So I can now control shift and click on this add. And there we go, it's loading up. So you can see that now there are sunbeams right here, but because we added that mask, we're telling it don't have the sunbeams where the mask is. So there we go, that is how you use Blender's sunbeams node in the compositor. It's really quite easy to use and you can get some really cool results. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.